Welcome everybody to the this special ser this special webinar that is the student webinar. Those are the winner of the BioExcel Summer School 2024. So as a poster prize, we provide the opportunity to give a webinar. And Marta and uh, Sachin won this prize, and so now they will present their research in this webinar. They are both come from the Research Center of ULIC, and uh, they will tell two different stories. I'm Alessandra Villa, I'm most in this uh, webinar together with Otto Anderson and Richard Norman, and we are all belongs to the BioExcel Center of Excellence. So just that you are aware, the webinar will be recorded. During the webinar, you can use the function that you find on the bottom of the Zoom application. You can find this symbol or this symbol. And there you can type your question while we are running the webinar. Please use uh, for the presentation of Marta, that will be the first one, use at one or at Marta. And for the presentation of Sachin, use uh, at two of his name. And then at the end of the webinar, I use, I will read, I will, we will unmute you if you have a microphone so you can ask the question yourself, or I will read the question for you. So the speaker of today. So Marta will speak in particular about scaling up the past molecular dynamics algorithm for biological system, while Sachin will speak about the implementation of force matching algorithm within this streaming scalable mimic framework for multi-scale QMMM simulation. So we have we are dealing with slightly two topics, both in the context of molecular dynamics technique. So now I will give the word to Marta, please. Stop share. Okay, thank you. Do you see the slide? Perfect. Thank okay. you. Thank you. So, uh, hello everyone. I'm Marta De Vaudier, a PhD student at Persian Centrum Mulic in the Institute of Computational Biomedicine under the supervision of Professor Paolo Carloni and the co-supervision of Professor Giulia Rossetti and Davide Mandelli. Um, today, I will present you the PATH uh, Molecular Dynamics Algorithm that, it, uh, that is a recent proposed PATH sampling technique to compute kinetic rates. Okay. Uh, to model biological processes, uh, such as the signaling cascade of a GPCR, differential equations are used. The differential equations describe the rate of change in concentration of complexes over time. The equilibrium between the unbound and bound state of these molecules is described by the dissociation constant uh, Kd, which is directly related to the free energy difference, delta G, um, between the bound and unbound states. The thermodynamics and kinetics of binding are linked as uh, Kd is equal to key off over key on. A recent study have shown that the kinetic of drug receptor binding could be as important as, or in some cases, even more important than uh, binding affinity in de uh, determining drag drug efficacy. As shown uh, in this two plot on the top, we can see that resident time is uh, highly correlated with uh, functional efficiency, uh, efficacy, uh, but there is little correlation with binding affinity. This let us uh, conclude that uh, the resi uh, residence time of a drug receptor complex is a value of paramount importance for the rational design of ligands with optimal specificity and safety. However, uh, these values are not um, easy to compute. Here uh, we can see two examples of a kinetic study that were performed in our lab in Ulic. And as you can see, in both uh, these two examples, there is a difference of one order of magnitude and two order of magnitude in the calculation of the off compared to the experimental one. A difference in, va in value that is probably related to limitation associated with uh, first field. 
these are only two examples of kinetic study that were performed in the uh, last few years. But, but as we can see in the next slide, um, these are all the kinetic studies that were published by 2022. On the left, uh, we can see that the prediction uh, um, of kinetics rate, rates was performed considering as benchmark system the uh, trypsin benzamidine. While on the right, uh, it is possible to see that only few more biological systems were analyzed. So the number of systems studied by 2022 is really limited. And this is due to the fact that obtaining reliable values for kinetic rates uh, is a big challenge. And first of all, the kinetics rates depend on the entire unbinding pathway. And uh, moreover, the time scale of ligand binding and release often exceeded the uh, capabilities of molecular dynamics simulation by order of magnitude. Usually, an sampling is a more general approach in molecular dynamics uh, to simulate ligand unbinding pathways and um, determine mechanism and rate constant. Among these uh, class of methods, we have some CV-based approaches, uh, path sampling approaches, and Markov state models that could be used to uh, compute kinetic rates. Um, all these uh, single techniques present some difficulties, but above all, a main problem that is common to all of them is that all uh, um, these NN sampling schema uh, cannot be easily made parallel. Uh, for that reason, in 2020, we developed uh, um, an approach that is based on the statistical mechanics of PATH that address the issues uh, of um, parallelization by achieving parallelization at the level of the time evolution. This approach is called metadynamic of PATH. So uh, in standard molecular dynamics simulation, a discretized trajectory um, is generated in a sequential manner due to the inherent seriality of the time evolution process. And metadynamic of path circumvents this problem and achieves parallelization in time by sampling directly um, from the phase space of all possible trajectories. The method applies to stochastic, stochastic trajectories and exploit the uh, isomorphism between the path probability distribution and the Boltzmann distribution of a fictitious elastic polymer. The polymer is constituted by the system configuration along the path, connected by springs. One can then generate a full trajectory at once by sampling them directly from the path probability distribution using molecular dynamic simulation of the fictitious polymer. This means dealing with a system that is now n times larger than the original one. However, the calculation can be made fully parallel. And when coupled uh, this technique with well-established and sampling schemes, the method allows fast exploration of, of uh, phase space and also retrieves dynamical information. Metadynamic of path is a CV-based approach, and for that reason, as an uh, sampling scheme, metadynamic can be used to focus the sampling on the important reactive trajectory connecting, um, um, connecting metastable states. The use of metadynamics requ requires defining a CV in trajectory space. Uh, it has been shown that metadynamic of path defines uh, C uh, collective variables in trajectory space as end-to-end -end distance uh, across the bits of the polymer in terms of an underlying collective variable in configuration space that is able to distinguish between the bound and unbound state. Uh, with this choice of collective variable, Polymer's configuration corresponding to non-reactive trajectories that start and then in the same metastable state um, will correspond to small absolute value of uh, the collective variable in, in this collective variable, while polymer's configuration corresponding to reactive trajectory will be characterized by large value of uh, the collective variable. Performing metadynamic simulation using this collective variable enhances the fluctuation of the end-to-end -end distance, thus increasing the probability of observing polymers corresponding to the reactive trajectories of interest. 
So uh, the main advantages of the metadynamic of path algorithm is, is that it can be implemented in a, a hyper parallel fashion, making optimal use of modern massively parallel supercomputer. And it also allows computing kinetic rates. So far, uh, the, uh, the algorithm, it has been applied only to simplify model system. In particular, um, we have shown how metadynamics in trajectory space combined with machine learning can be of great help in the design of effective collective variable to be used in metadynamic simulation to speed up the convergence of free energy calculation, applying uh, this protocol to uh, the alanine defect type. And uh, we have also showed uh, how metadynamic of path could be used com to compute kinetics uh, using Miller's theory. In this case, applying the, um, the algorithm to the uh, ammonia molecule. Uh, these two first application of the code have been conducted with a preliminary implementation of the algorithm in the LAMPS suite of code. Uh, LAMPS is not well suited for biomolecular simulations as compared to other um, H -H -P HPC software. And for that reason, we have decided to uh, implement uh, uh, the PathMD algorithm in Romax that is uh, among the most widely used uh, HPC-oriented uh, classical molecular dynamics software packages for biomolecular simulation. Um, moreover, as already said, uh, the metadynamic of path method has been applied only to simplify model system, and its performance on area biological event is still unknown, a transition that is crucial and by no means trivial. Towards the exciting and ambitious goals of scaling up the algorithm to real biological system and calculating the residence time of a drug to its target ligand, uh, we want uh, here to apply metadynamic of path by studying protein ligand and binding processes, focusing on the human adenosine receptor type 2A. Uh, the human adenosine receptor belongs to the human G protein couple receptor, that is the largest membrane receptor family. And the adenosine receptor has a high pharmacological relevance. Indeed, it is considering a um, promising uh, drug target for combating Parkinson's disease. Uh, to, um, to set up the system for, uh, for the simulation, we have to focus our attention on the choice of the membrane composition. Uh, in our group, a previous study on the ad adenosine receptor was performed. In particular, in this work, a comparative molecular dynamic study of the adenosine receptor in complex with uh, uh, caffeine within different membrane types uh, was presented. The different membrane types are um, so one single um, phospholipid membrane, a mixed phospholipidic membrane, and a membrane uh, composed by mixed phospholipids and cholesterol. Um, uh, microsecond, uh, microseconds of molecular dynamic uh, Simulations were performed considering these, uh, these parameters and these force fields. And, uh, uh, yeah, okay. and the results of the simulations showed that uh, both uh, the adenosine receptor fold and the ligand binding are sensitive to the lipid environment where the adenosine receptor is embedded. Most important, um, these, uh, in this work, it, it was shown that the presence of cholesterol affects the ligand binding pose and mobility. Indeed, cholesterol binding affects the shape of the binding cavity, stabilizing a specific binding conformation of the ligand. And we, we can conclude so that including a correct description of the neural membranes uh, may be very important for this kind of system, this kind of uh, calculation. For that reason, uh, to set up uh, um, the, the system for my calculation, uh, I embedded the adenosine receptor in a membrane of mixed phospholipids and cholesterol molecules, mimicking the ration among the three components in human cellular plasma membranes. And in particular, um, we will focus on the, on the adenosine receptor in complex with its high antagonist ZMA. Um, these are the first field and the parameter that I use for the standard molecular dynamics uh, simulation. And here on the right, you can see a, represent a final representation of uh, uh, the equilibrated structure. 
starting from the equilibrium structure that you saw in the previous slide, um, we have uh, now to set up the, the system for the metadynamic of path calculation, considering in this case a polymer made up of 512 bits. That it means, so we are dealing with a system with a polymer of sites equal to uh, 77 um, millions of, of atoms. Um, the assumption behind the metadynamic of path algorithm, as already said, is that the polymer represents a Brownian trajectory. For that reason, to generate the starting configuration uh, of the polymer, we have performed the Brownian dynamic simulation for uh, um, uh, 10 to the 6 steps uh, and saved the last 512 steps as initial configuration for the polymer beads. Um, here on the left, you can see again a representation of the path molecular dynamic algorithm that propagates the dynamic of a fictitious polymer uh, representing a discretized trajectory. In particular, at uh, each time, uh, time step of the path molecular dynamic simulation, a new polymer configuration is obtained, which must be interpreted as a possible discretized trajectory of the system. Uh, as a first step, uh, we check uh, the correct implementation of the algorithm by running short benchmark sim benchmarking simulations. In particular, um, we have run preliminary um, MVE simulation to check the energy conservation and uh, um, uh, the parameters of the thermostat used for the MVT simulation have been validated by checking that the target temperature of 310 Kelvin uh, is correctly maintained. This short uh, benchmarking simulation shows also that the Gramax implementation of the code uh, is working. Uh, ideally, what we want with uh, PathMD, so with um, um, metadynamic of path, we would like to simulate the longest possible trajectory, that it means the longest possible polymer. For that reason, what we are interested in is the weak scaling of the algorithm. The implementation of the um, uh, metadynamic of path code in Gromax has been made, uh, made by the PhD student Niti Malapalli, and he also implemented the code on the GPUs. And here it's possible to see so the weak scaling results um, of our adapted version of Gromax for metadynamic of path simulation and uh, of our adapted version of Gromax for metadynamic of path simulation patched with Plumed. Uh, with Plumed. And it is possible to see that uh, the scalability results have been obtained using um, over 38,000 score while maintaining in both cases an overall parallel efficiency uh, above 70% on the JUELS booster uh, module of the ULIC Supercomputer, Supercomputer Center. Uh, so to conclude, what we can say is that the kinetic of drugs unbinding is a really an important parameter for drugs efficacy. And a problem, a problem that, is, that is common to um, all the techniques to compute kinetics is related to their modest parallel performance. And for that reason, uh, metadynamic of path addresses the parallelization issues at the level of the time evolution. What we, we saw in the previous slide and what we are focus, uh, focused on now is scaling up the metadynamic of path method for its application to biological system of pharmacological relevance. And for that reason, we, uh, we decide to apply this algorithm on the adenosine receptor. Um, the transition between uh, from a simplified model system to a real biological uh, system is by no means trivial because now um, we are dealing with systems we saw that are um, a polymer of the size of 77 uh, millions of atoms. And what we have uh, so is that we have an efficient code that is able to take full advantages from modern massively parallel architecture as, it, as we saw in the previous slide with uh, um, impressive scalability results. And what we are working on now is to obtain stable long simulation for production. That is again, by no means trivial for uh, such a large system because we are dealing with a poly polymer that contains tens, uh, tens of millions of atoms and obtain so stable trajectory for such a large system required some works and 
So we are working now actually on it. So thank you for the attention. And I would like again to thank my supervisor, uh, uh, Paolo Carloni, and co supervisor Giulia Rossetti and Davide Mandelli, and also Emiliano Ippoliti uh, and the PhD student Nitin and Lucas for uh, useful discussion about this work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marta. Great. So now we go on. And in the meantime, if you have any question, please use the Q&A button that uh, you find there so you can we can start to collect questions for Marta so she can also read and maybe thinks the answer. Yeah. OK, please, Tachin, go on. Can, can you see the slide? Can everybody see the slide? Yes, they are perfect. Yes. Uh, thank you, Alessandra, for a nice introduction and uh, for giving me the, like, and thank you, Bioxel team, for giving me, giving me this opportunity to to share my research work uh, with the public. And so I'm Sachin Shivakumar. I'm working as a first year PhD student in at Poison Center of ULEC. So the work I'm going to present today is uh, implementation of post matching algorithm with an extremely scalable mimic framework for multi scale. Uh, QMM simulation. The main, uh, the core idea behind the the work is to have a, 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 a automated workflow of force matching that can take advantage of the high quality QMM data to optimize biomolecular force fields that are required for drug discovery process. So we, uh, our group is always targeted towards the application towards the drug discovery process. So let me. So let me give you an overview of the talk. So I'll, I'll initially I'll introduce the key terms I'll, have, uh, I'll be using in the talk, such as QMM, what, what is QMM, what is MIMIT. Then I'll briefly describe the problem statement and the motivation behind the work. And next introduce what's force matching, what, uh, what are the uh, detailed steps involved in it. Then, uh, then I'll explain the uh, force matching, or how force matching is implemented in MIMIT, what are the input parameters and uh, how efficient is the code? Then finally, we'll talk about the preliminary results of the ongoing work. So let's uh, start with uh, what's QMM simulation and uh, basically why do we need it? So uh, consider if you want to uh, study any biomolecular process where reactions are involved. When you say reaction, it's you have to consider electronic degrees of motion. So, so okay. Uh, so for example, on the right, you can see a, a cartoon uh, diagram of a protein. It's a catalytic protein. It performs a catalytic reaction in the brain. So if you want to uh, simulate the catalytic reaction of the brain, you need to take, on, take account the electronic degrees of freedom uh, at the active site, which is circled in the blue. So, so to to take account the electronic degrees of freedom, we, you need to select, uh, simulate the system at the the quantum mechanics scale. Uh, since the since any biological system has a, this uh, are greater than the size, uh, uh, since since any biological system has the size. Uh, for example, this particular protein has a size greater than 100,000 atoms. So, to, so it's computationally impossible, uh, uh, infeasible to simulate the uh, such large system at the uh, QM scale. So, so one way to solve this particular problem is to is to break apart the system into two parts: the QM and the MM. Where in the MM part, we have the portion where you you require the electronic degrees of freedom to be captured, and the and the rest of the system is treated at the MM level, where you don't need the electronic degrees of freedom. So, so how do we compute the uh, energy at uh, multi-scale simulations? So, so you compute the energy of the active site at the QM scale, 
using one of the ab initio methods and you compute the energy of the mm region using one of the molecular mechanics simulation code and finally you you need to way to compute the interaction between the mm part and the qm part and that energy comes as qmm energy so depending on how you compute the qmm energy the you can classify uh, qmm as a two different scheme so on broadly basis you can classify them as subtractive and additive scheme in the subtractive scheme there is no actual interaction uh, between the qm and the mm part so we can we can say qm uh, energy is zero and we can write the uh, the final term of the final hamiltonian of the mm part as the uh, uh, energy of the total system minus the energy of the outer region So when we talk about the additive scheme, the main difference in the additive scheme is uh, we need to take into account the interaction between the QM part and the MM part. And the way the interaction is handled, we can classify the QMM simulation in three different categories. So one is called mechanical embedding, where the interaction between the QM and MM are treated at the classical force field level. And the second part is electrostatic embedding. Uh, in this method where the QM calculation is performed by, by taking into account the MM charges. So the, the uh, electron density of the QM region are polarized, polarized by the MM charges. So this is the one of the main methods which are implemented, implemented in the following uh, programs I'll discuss. And the final is called polarized method, where uh, both uh, MM charges and the QM charges are, are polarizing each other. So now I, I talked about the uh, what QMM is. So how, how how exactly is implemented in a, in a practical software? So one of the software uh, that implements QMM uh, that is developed by by our group and with uh, collaboration with uh, three other university is called multi-scale uh, modeling in, in computational chemistry. This particular framework is a, a, a general framework that can perform any multi-scale simulation by combining two different external programs with a simulation driver where it has a, uh, the, it, it's designed specially keeping in mind the multi data multi program paradigm where you can attach where you can interface in the external program uh, with the core mimic library to perform multi scale simulations so using this particular framework uh, there is a stable version of of the mimic code which is uh, developed using mimic framework here the code interfaces gromax and CPMD to have a QMM simulation package for MIMIC. And, and to perform any QMM simulation, you need, it's, uh, it's, it's not a straightforward uh, process to go from uh, uh, molecular mechanics simulation to QMM. You need, uh, you need a auxiliary code which can uh, prepare you input and help the user in selection of uh, QM region and the uh, preparation of input for CPMD, which is done by the uh, utility package called mimic -Pi. So next I'll briefly discuss about the communication pattern inside MIMIC and which will come uh, la uh, later in use where I explain uh, how we modify the code to implement post matching. So here, the CPMD is the, the main dri driver of MD code where it initializes the code and sends in data for, to MIMIC and GROMAX. And the, the main part of the MIMIC is to compute the QMM potential and, and collect the forces from the GROMAX, collect the MM forces from the GROMAX and totally, and finally the MD step is done in CPMD. And the one more reason we are, we are implementing our force matching in MIMIC is because it's 
very highly scalable. Here you can see a plot of strong scaling. A strong scaling means at every, for every, uh, where you uh, keep the size of the system constant and you increase the number of nodes. And you can see that uh, the, the simulation code has a strong efficiency of 70% at T1 at, at uh, 84,000 cores. So now, uh, move on to explaining how uh, QMM energy is computed in MIMIC. The, the, uh, the in MIMIC, uh, we separate the MM atoms into short range and long range atoms to reduce the computational cost and short range atoms and you define the the cutoff in the input parameters of MIMIC. So, so we reduce the computational cost by, by, by computing the interaction with the long range atom with the multiple expansion of QM subsystem. Uh, so by, by that you reduce the uh, uh, integration of uh, uh, QM uh, charge density with uh, each and every uh, charge at the, LR, uh, at the long range region. So uh, we need to like uh, take into account the uh, SR atoms, which we'll, we'll use it in the next uh, implementation. So I'm still here to, one thing to note is that the QMM simulation is still not uh, computationally feasible to simulate large uh, biological system at uh, experimental scales. So this is one of the reasons why we still uh, need molecular mechanics for the drug discovery process. So now, uh, like discussing one of the main uh, main motivation uh, for our work uh, is the application to uh, uh, drug discovery pro process. One of the disease diseases application we have is uh, Huntington disease, and uh, it is it it, it affects uh, one in uh, hundred thousand people, and and it is caused by a a mutation at the Huntington gene, where we have a uh, target called RNA repeats, which uh, generates a mutated protein, which leads to degeneration of, uh, of a brain of, of neurons, which leads to Huntington disease. And it is fatal and it has no treatment. So one of the possible uh, uh, treatment mechanism uh, is, to, is to have a molecule that can bind to this uh, CAG RNA repeat that inhibits MD1 uh, protein protein and stop the uh, uh, pathway of uh, biological pathway of uh, producing uh, toxic HCT protein. So this is uh, so uh, uh, one of the main challenges we are working on is to uh, find the, this particular compound which can bind to the protein and, and inhibit the interaction with IMD1 protein. So, so on the left, you see uh, the CAG, CAG hairpin complex with, uh, with, with the CAG RNA and, and uh, the proposed ligand which can bind to the RNA. And uh, the main uh, issue is that we are not able to simulate the system with molecular mechanics and get the experimental results because of the because the force field is not able to accurately describe the environment of the ligand due to high charge on the ligand so one of the solution is to simulate the system at the qmm scale where we treat the ligand at the quantum scale and the rest of the rna at mm scale but with qmm it's a computationally infeasible to simulate until experimental time scale. So now uh, one of the way to solve this problem is uh, we can use a particular uh, method called post matching, which has the capability to improve the uh, uh, classical mechanics by optimizing the force field by using uh, QMM simulation data and and that new optimized 
force field will be able to capture the relevant uh, effect from the surrounding to uh, possibly obtain the experimental data. So this is the uh, hypothesis we are trying to test and and then we are now focus on the now post matching algorithm which which we'll be using so force matching the main the idea behind force matching is to use umm data to optimize the biomolecular biomolecular force field uh, the name post matching comes from the term that we'll be we trying to optimize the biomolecular force field uh, based on the forces we calculated in QMM simulation so and and the forces we calculate in at the classical scale so uh, to do that we we have uh, as four steps initially the generation of data then we need to fit the charges on the QM atom to to find out the non bonded forces and the and the third step is to is to optimize the bonded parameters by finding the by, by finding the bonded forces and the final step is to simulate the system with optimized uh, parameters in the first step uh, what kind of gen, uh, data do we need for the uh, force matching algorithm the, we need like uh, three data points one is uh, electric potential and uh, and the electric field on the SR atom, which I described, the short range atom, which are directly coupled with the QM region and the forces on the QM region. In the second step, we use the, we use the potential and the field data from the first step to optimize the objective function, where we can see the objective function uh, basically is a least, in the least square uh, uh, format. Uh, with the weight factor for the potential and the electric field and and we constrain the solution of the charges to some reference charges and we constrain the total charge of the uh, QM atom to the sum of the charges on the QM atoms. So uh, at the next step, uh, we are to find the find the optimize the force field parameters. We compute the non-bonded interaction by using the Van der Waals parameters from the force field and the charges we, we fitted in the second step. Then we perform the optimization process over the N set of configurations to obtain a optimized force field. And the final step is to uh, use that new force field parameters to uh, simulate the system at the MM scale and, and, and compare it with the experimental data. Now, uh, I'll focus on the implementation of force matching. The, the main goal behind the, the, the implementation is to leverage the high uh, extreme scalability of the MIMIC code and build a user-friendly interface for post-matching algorithm in MimicPy and simplify the transition between uh, QMM simulation to post-matching to MIMIC in a unified pipeline. In the first uh, generation of data, to compute, as I mentioned before, to compute uh, for the post-matching, we need uh, electric field and the potential on the SAR atom that needs to be computed and stored as well as the force on the QM atom. In the diagram uh, I showed you before, uh, this is the communication flow of the, the MIMIC, where we have two other functionality to compute the, uh, the electric field and the potential during the computation of the forces and store it, and then call the, the print function on the data depending on on if the force matching is activated to print out the for, uh, print out the uh, force matching data for the uh, next process. 
so that we print out the form uh, data in a json format which will be helpful in a standardized format which is helpful to to the which will be helpful for the uh, next analysis process uh, in the next step we are implementing the DREFs and the optimization process in mimic where we have a command line interface for both of the option with the user with a single command line interface. In the DRESP implementation, we uh, linearize the objective function and solve the, the linearized the equation using uh, uh, least square method. Uh, now moving on to the uh, preliminary results. Uh, now initially we uh, tested our uh, uh, DRESP uh, algorithm on the uh, data generated on acetone in water. The acetone is solvated in uh, uh, 506 uh, in water molecule, and and we get a promising result to uh, to show that the the algorithm we implemented is working. Uh, in the results, we can clear, we can notice that there is a, a significant change in the charge on the oxygen atom. Uh, this is mainly uh, uh, due to the uh, hydrogen bond now formed by oxygen on the acetone with the solution with the uh, water molecules, which can clearly see that the, 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 the force field charges on the acetone cannot clearly capture uh, the surrounding interaction with the surrounding molecule. Uh, then we applied the initial DREF starts between our uh, biological system we are interested in. And uh, here also you can clearly see that the, the algorithm is working uh, uh, working correctly and uh, and the data needs to be analyzed further to extract uh, information. And finally, to conclude, uh, uh, yeah, we are applying the uh, post-matching algorithm to bio biologically re relevant uh, complexes, which are uh, which are leading to the drug discovery process, and and to implement the force matching, we added new functionality in Mimic to generate the data, uh, which takes advantage of the extreme scalability of Mimic, and we have implemented uh, in Mimic by user friendly way to perform DRS fitting and optimization process, and finally the output of the work is to provide the community with fully automated uh, workflow for force matching in Mimic that can be used to optimize any biomolecular force field that's uh, suited for any given problem. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge my, my supervisors, Paolo Carloni and Eric Lindan, and my co-supervisors, Davri Mandeli and Julia Resetti, and the funding agency, uh, and my uh, funding the Activate uh, Consortium, which is funded by European Union. And thanks to uh, my colleague, uh, Lynn, uh, she's uh, collaborating me with this particular work and, and she, she, uh, she's the person who has done all the uh, simulation in the part. And thanks to uh, Bharat for uh, uh, based on some of the talk on based on his, uh, his thesis and and, and thanks to all collab collaborators at uh, EPFL, uh, Andrea and Ursula, uh, who are involved in post matching implementation. So, thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you both. So, now we open the QA section. So, we have a question from Richard. So, Richard, you can unmute and ask question. I think you have a question for Marta, is correct? Yeah, that's right. Uh, thank okay, you, uh, so just I just want to point anybody else that has a question. I think Otto, you can raise uh, activate a raise hand. So if you just raise your hand, I can unmute you, so you can speak or type your question in the Q and A. Thank you. Please, uh, Richard. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll go ahead. So thanks, uh, Marta, for a, a nice talk, and it's, it's perhaps a, a, a bit of a naive question, just to sort of start us off and I, I appreciate that perhaps part of the answer is 
uh, to do with the fact that uh, the adenosine receptor that you're working on is sort of well studied in, in your lab. But I, I just wondered why you had chosen such a potentially complex system, you know, GPCR, uh, obviously ligand, um, and and uh, a fairly sort of complex uh, membrane involved. So, um, and, and why not perhaps start with something a little bit more simpler, uh, like a smaller protein with, you know, uh, ligand, a particular ligand of interest? Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for the question. Yes, uh, probably we, we were, we are a, a little bit too ambitious, but the choice of this system was both related to the to the fact that uh, in our lab uh, um, we have um, a lot of works related to the adenosine receptor, but um, most of all we choose uh, this um, this system because uh, it's a system that has a high pharmacological relevance. And what we were we were interesting on it was scaling up the code uh, on uh, real biological events. So uh, we just decided to see. Uh, how is it on this system? And now we are facing up some problem that we need to fix because, as you said, there are a lot of degrees of freedom. We have the membrane and everything, so it's not easy to uh, to stabilize all the simulation and everything. But yeah, the pharmacological relevance of the <laughs> the receptor was what uh, drive us to choose this system. But we are also doing some other studying also on other system in the meantime. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other question from the public? Please raise your hand or just type your question. In the meantime, I will ask something also. So I was curious, uh, this is something for both of you. What is, what is, what you think is the, so you present two methods two different approach somehow, then you have start with a test case and then you move up to a real case. What do you see the higher challenge and limitation of your approach? So I don't know what, who wants to start. One of the two, it doesn't matter for me. <laughs> okay, okay, I think I can start like a, in, the, in the force matching algorithm. Uh, uh, currently, since you are a, uh, since we rely on uh, QMM data to, to match the optimize the force field uh, in the QMM simulation, it cannot uh, sample uh, 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 the torsional uh, differences, uh, to, uh, torsional degrees of freedom of the ligand. So we might uh, miss out on the uh, on the optimizing the dihedral part of the ligand. So that's um, one of the problem need to be fixed and. Uh, Yeah, I think that's all one of the. Yeah. And Marta, in your case, then I have a follow up question. Please, Marta. Uh, in my case, it's, um, I will say that uh, this algorithm was not testing on a um, biological system so far. And also, the implementation of Gramax uh, is quite new. So, uh, the main challenging is actually dealing up with. A system that, that has a size that is a uh, uh, five or uh, four order of magnitude bigger than the previous one. So every time that we were not sure about what expected from this simulation, so every time that we run the simulation, we have to check uh, how it's going uh, to check the thermodynamics parameters to see that everything is fine, and then adapt uh, in the meantime uh, the code and understand how to do to fix uh, some. Uh, problem and doing some parameters so yeah so that uh, but you think uh, is uh, uh, do you do you see some limitation of the approach so you far you can apply to any other system so i mean we you present biomolecule biomolecule biopolymer are very different so you could have a protein and dna are very different between themselves or we have a different time scale also involved and different type of reconformation or arrangement. Yeah, so far a problem that we are uh, dealing is related to the pressure in the system. So uh, we have to uh, understand in, in this case for a biological system, how to uh, 
fix the value of the pressure around the, the uh, physical one, so uh, around the one bar, and we are dealing with some problem with the pressure in the simulation. We have to control that, so this probably could be a limitation of the approach, but yeah, we are working on it, so. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Sachin, Sachin, mm -hmm. I was wondering. Um, so you say that. Uh, so in your force matching, you get influence from both, uh, for both from the QM and the MEM part. I understand correctly. Or do yeah. you correct? Do you correct somehow from this? You don't are afraid to double describe something. To have double. Okay. Contribution. Uh, no, no, no. I, I think it's uh, you are, we're not getting any double con contribution. If I, if I think I, uh, if I mentioned it currently, uh, uh, the, we take uh, the force field from the MM part. We don't take any contribution. So we are optimizing the force field using the QM data. So that uh, just not, okay. No... So you you remove the QM part, the yeah. MM part. Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I would like to have some question for our public. Is there any question over there? We have all mute people. A little scared. <laughs> okay, so if there are not any more questions, I would like to thank you, both of you. Thank you for the nice webinar. And uh, yeah, I, then uh, Oh, I want just to share and tell about the new webinar that we will have. Just give me a moment that I share again my screen, which is the new occasion that we have, hoping that this time is going fine. So uh, from uh, from September, we start an, again the normal uh, BioXL webinar series. And this time we will have a webinar on uh, PDBE. And it will be driven by some uh, for the PDBE team that is located in ABI, Cambridge. And uh, so please go to our website, register, and it's the 10th of September 2024 at 3 uh, Central European time, summer Central, we are still in summer. So yeah, I'm looking forward to see you again there. And thank you everybody for joining. And I will close here the today's section. Bye-bye.